Jacob Burton here from StellaCulinary.com, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a restaurant-style braised beef short rib, complete with the pan reduction and glaze, which is very important. So here I have a 3x3 three three short rib. That means three bones long and three inches wide. This is a pretty standard size, so if you want a short rib this size, ask your butcher for a 3x3. Three three. Now, you'll notice on the top here, I have some silver skin. Now, not all short ribs will have this. But if yours does, you want to trim it off by gently sliding your sharp, sharp knife underneath that silver skin and angling up towards the silver skin so you don't chunk the meat because that silver skin will be chewy. It won't break down during the braising process. Season with some kosher salt and freshly ground black pepper. And now we're going to get our aromatics ready. So here I have the white portion of a leek and some carrots, celery, onions, your basic mirepoix, ginger, and garlic. And then for my fresh herbs... I have some uh, parsley and thyme. So you're going to go through and just whack these all up. And don't worry about cutting them into even pieces. You just want to create a lot of surface area by thinly slicing them. Now set those aside while you heat a large skillet over high flame. When it's nice and hot, remember you always want to make sure your skillet's hot before adding your oil. Add in your favorite high smoke point cooking oil. And then you start the searing process. So I'm going to lay the uh, meat side down, bone side up on the short ribs. And I'm going to give them a nice hard sear. As you can see here, my pan is kind of jammed, but that's okay. And then I'm going to flip on all sides. I'm going to sear on all sides because the more uh, surface area I'm able to sear, the better flavor I'm going to have. Now I'm going to place my mirepoix directly into that hot pan with the fat rendered from the short ribs after I've seared them. And I'm going to brown this mirepoix. And basically you see already how I had a lot of fat and oil in there and all that fat and oil got soaked up into that mirepoix and it's going to help me start to brown it. Once the vegetables are brown to your liking, you want to deglaze with two cups of red wine and stir it around a little bit. You want to make sure you reduce it by at least half. And this is going to concentrate the flavors, but it's also going to cook out any of the raw alcohol taste. And if you don't reduce your wine, you're going to have some sour and off flavors that are caused by the raw alcohol. Place this whole mixture into the bottom of a braising pan here. I'm using a half hotel pan. More on this in the show notes. And I'm placing down my fresh herbs, parsley, and thyme. You can use whatever you like, but you don't want to use anything super strong like rosemary because it'll just permeate the entire dish. I'm going to cover with some homemade roasted veal stock. Roasted chicken stock will work as well, but you can't use the store-bought stuff because it doesn't contain enough gelatin to create our glaze or our sauce later on. Cover this with a nice tight foil lid, sealing off the edges, and place into an oven that is turned off. Yes, that's right. You want to place it into a cold oven and then turn your oven on because the whole trick here is we want to bring it up slowly to temperature. So I'm setting it at 200 degrees Fahrenheit, and this is going to take anywhere from four to five hours because we're doing a real slow cook. And once that bone releases, boom, you are solid. You are ready to rock because that's showing you that your short rib is nice and tender. And that slow cook is going to allow us to keep more moisture contained in our short ribs during the braising process. Now remove the short ribs and place them on a separate pan. And then when I'm at home, I just like to simply strain out the big particles of the mirepoix and aromatics through a colander and set those aside. And then I'm going to pass this through a fine uh, strainer or chinois. And straining it twice like this is really important because you first want to remove the big particles and then the smaller ones because see what's stuck in my small fine mesh strainer? That is grit and it's going to affect our mouthfeel later on, especially when we reduce the sauce and create a glaze. Now I'm placing this sauce over a high flame. I'm bringing it to a boil and I'm going to reduce to a simmer. Now notice how I move the pot halfway off the flame. This allows me to skim easily and this is super super important you want to place your pot halfway off the flame and see how all my fat collects on one side you want to go through and just gently dip one edge of your ladle underneath that fat and continue to skim throughout the reduction process now while that sauce is still reducing i'm going to just remove the short rib from the bone and this is an optional step you always want to braise on the bone because it adds more flavor and tenderness but for serving it makes portioning a little bit easier to remove the bone uh, these short ribs aren't all the same size so i can cut them in half or whatever and kind of portion them better now the the portion underneath the short rib that connects to the bone is chewy so you want to cut that off and remove it but don't toss it out i like it it has a lot of flavor but you might not want to necessarily serve it to a guest so that's a good scooby snack later on because it does contain some silver skin now these bones 
aren't completely spent. We've only braised for, you know, four or five hours. So I'm going to place these bones in a freezer bag, place them in my freezer, and use those for my next round of stock. Meanwhile, back in skimming land, we're going to skim again. Notice a trend here? Because we want to make sure that we're removing all this fat. If you do not remove this fat, you are going to have a greasy glaze, which is no bueno. You didn't know I spoke Spanish, did you? Now, place your pan over high heat again. Now, this is an optional reinforcement step. And I'm going to add a little bit more red wine, a couple bunches of thyme, and then I have a little sachet here of just minced mirepoix, carrot, celery, and onion, very fine brunoise. And I'm going to reduce that in the red wine. Now, again, this is an optional step. This is how we pick up the short ribs at the restaurant. So we have the short ribs already cooked off. They've already been braised. And then on the pickup, we add some red wine, reduce it with some more aromatics to reinforce some flavor. And then we take our braising liquid, place it in the pan, and continue to reduce. Look at that, skimming again, skimming more fat. Once your glaze starts to form, you want to remove your thyme and your sachet of mirepoix. Now, I like to add a little squirt of Dijon mustard, but shh, that's our secret, okay? That, but I'll tell you what, a little Dijon in your glazing liquid, mm-mm-mm. It really, the piquancy of the Dijon really kind of kicks it up to the next level. So just go ahead and whisk that in to make sure it's all thoroughly dissolved. And then once you have a glaze that looks about this, it's called nappe. It means it can uh, coat the spoon a little bit. Just a very light coating. I'm going to throw my Scooby Snacks in there because it's going to add a little more flavor. And I'll pull, pull these off. I'll, uh, I'll eat these tomorrow for lunch with a little bit of steamed rice or whatever I have lying around. And then I'm going to place my short ribs into that glaze. And the short ribs are already sort of kind of warm because they've been sitting at room temperature. I never refrigerated them. And I'm just going to toss in this glaze until they heat all the way through and you have a nice, even glaze. Now, this is what you always hear Tom Colicchio cracking chefs for on Top Chef when he says, hey, your short ribs weren't glazed, your braised dish wasn't glazed because they didn't take the time because they were probably in the weeds, not because they didn't know how, but they were probably in the weeds and they didn't take the time to reduce down their sauce long enough to form this beautiful, gorgeous glaze that then clings to your braised meat. Simple, right? Yeah, it just takes a little time and you got to skim. Now, toss it around in the glaze with your tongs and that is looking pretty good. Now, look, at a simple dish like this, braised beef, I like some uh, garlic and chive mashed potatoes. I don't know about you. Uh, sometimes I, I'll do some glazed vegetables, too, all uh, kind of like a spatch chicken uh, video that we have. I'll put a link to that in the show notes. And then I'm just going to place the short ribs right on top and arrange them so they look nice and tight. Now, notice as I'm plating the short ribs, I'm rolling them around in the glaze so they're evenly coated and nice and glazed. And I'm going to finish with a little drizzle sauce. So you do a one spoon drop down, a little drizzle with your wrist. Now, let's watch that again in some slow motion. So all the sauce empties the spoon pretty much. And those last little bits, you drizzle around the plate. And it looks nice, right? For more information, please refer to our show notes found in our cooking techniques video section at stellaculinary.com slash CT. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, just go ahead and click the link in the bottom of your video screen.